Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You're watching The Big Picture with me, Frank Rouse and Pereira. Allowing only authorized people to access computer labs, banning use of USBs, blocking pop-ups and keeping a check on appearance of new and unfamiliar icons on desktops or are among the cyber security and safety guidelines issued to schools and parents by the National Council of Education, Research and Training. The council has sent the detailed guidelines to schools defining the role of teachers as well as parents in promoting safe legal and ethical use of the internet by students. The guidelines issued on Tuesday also asked teachers to regularly review browsing history on the devices being used by children and monitor device usage by students and not to engage with cyber bullies. This February, a cyberbullying incident from a Gurugram school where a class 8 student threatened to rape a teacher and harm her daughter in an Instagram post had caused much concern among parents in schools prompting a rethink of policies dealing with such behavior. On this edition of The Big Picture, we will take a closer look at the cyberbullying problem. Joining me on the program today are Major Harsh Kumar, Secretary, National Council of Educational Research and Training, Aprajita Gautam, President, Delhi Parents Association, and Karnika Seth, cyber law expert and author, Protection of Children on Internet. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of The Big Picture. Karnika, I'd like to begin with you. First, let's try and put into perspective and understand what cyberbullying really is. Cyberbullying is basically, um, you know, a term which we uh, use in the cyberspace domain uh, to indicate or to uh, cover those acts uh, which uh, caused you know to harass somebody or to intimidate somebody to cause a fear in somebody's mind particularly if it is uh, either peer to peer that is another child you know harassing another child or using any kind of uh, you know statements which are uh, going to cause anxiety in him or fear or you know, some sort of uh, even low self-esteem, you know, somebody trying to uh, pressurize another uh, kid or an adult trying to pressurize an, a younger child uh, into any kind of activity which will be causing fear, a lot of uh, psychological disturbance in his mind, which is called bullying. Sure. So this is what uh, it really means and it is a crime. Uh, in the IPC also, when we say criminal intimidation or causing uh, anybody, uh, you know, fear uh, of it could be any threat also, that would amount to, you know, uh, causing him any kind of fear of uh, threat to body, mind or uh, in, in reputation for that matter. So th those are covered by law as uh, criminal activities and uh, there are punishments up to three years uh, on fine and or both in such cases and uh, that is something which is a punishable offence. Unfortunately in the IT Act we don't have an express provision to deal with cyber bullying as a you know specific term uh, as an offence uh, defined under the Act with you know, considering the, the pace at which cybercrime is increasing today, uh, particularly the rising bullying cases in Indian, India today, I think it is high time we incorporate those provisions uh, as offenses, things like sexting, things like cyberbullying, um, and, um, you know, there are sextortion, other kinds of crimes which are hybrid crimes emerging in the rising cyberspace today. So this is uh, something which I feel we should have a specific law to deal with that. Indeed. We'll talk about that in just a bit, about a specific law to deal with these several problems coming out of the cyberspace. But before that, talking about cyberbullying itself, Aprajita, how prevalent is it in India and how many children or, you know, students really indulge in it or are targeted through this? Uh, see, as Ma'am uh, said, uh, there is no specific law related to cyberbullying. If I am talking about some, uh, means uh, you are talking, you are asking me about the some percentage which I can give you figure. If I am talking about 2014, uh, 14 and 15, National Center for Education Statics and Bureau, uh, they did some uh, uh, research on this. 21 percent of students aged between 12 and 8, 18 experience bullying hmm. in this case and after that uh, 2015 youth risk behavior surveillance system they did once uh, 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 estimate and 16 percent high school students were bullied that time so percentage is if you are talking about the percentage this is the data uh, i am talking about the 2014 and 15 and we here we are in 2018 hmm. and we are 
going towards the completely digital uh, digitalization so if definitely the number is increasing day by day as you uh, just mentioned uh, eight year student he bullet through instagram to her teacher like um, he will do rape or uh, do something against her daughter these are the crimes definitely we are going to face in future and we should have some concrete law related to cyber bullying which we do not have if i'm talking about some act and law and it, i think ma'am please correct me if i'm wrong and uh, i think uh, it is only it act if i'm talking about the article 67 is the only thing we do have poxo also in place now poxo uh -huh. act which came into being in 2012 there are certain activities which can be you know covered by section 11 there but or 12 but there's no specific law yeah, to but, deal with the problem but i think particularly this is to cover something like criminal intimidation covers not only threat to one's reputation property or uh, to a person you know in in physical safety point of view uh, that broad ambit is lacking in the poxo section 11 and sure. you know that's something which i i really have to say that indeed yes yeah. yes please continue see what i was trying to say um uh like ncert they just uh, um, uh, pass one you can say circular but my question is that who will take the responsibility of implementation passing a circular is not going to solve the problem hmm. but is but at least it's a start at least yes. th this is very welcoming yes. uh, if you ask me this is very so welcoming, very welcoming. Uh, uh, action taken by the ncert somebody is taking care of this thing we really appreciate this thing but we want ncert should they should depute some officers with them who can go and check whether the schools are following all the norms or not sure okay i th i think uh, uh, major harsh kumar can respond to that major as far as the guidelines itself are concerned what do the guidelines state and how are we going to fix accountability see i am uh, not very clear about the guidelines what you said we have to check on that but uh, as far as what uh, madam is saying about implementing those things see that is uh, not the in the ambit of ncert ncert is responsible for making curriculum so and then uh, you know books are taught in the school so it is the responsibility of the school basically to whether those guidelines are being followed or not and i will go far from that you know uh, as a parents we are responsible what are kids are studying in the school and we should interact with the teachers also what is being taught and definitely it requires a check you know because otherwise uh, children are open to any type of site they can go to any type of site so basically is the social responsibility which is coming they they can no be ombudsman on that they can no be uh, a check on that uh, centrally uh, that has to be come from within the society with the parents like you are the head of the you know parent society so that has to be discussed among the teachers and the parents and then only it can come because definitely this is taking we need to sensitize taking, the parents the yeah. teachers yeah. Uh, yeah, the all yes. stakeholders sure, sure, sure. Yes. 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 let him complete this point and then we'll get to that as well yeah so that is the thing and uh, uh, so far as uh, you know guidelines are concerned nothing in written has been asked for this mm. otherwise there was a you know a point which has come regarding cameras and all to be installed in the classrooms and not uh, see at strategic points you do require to lodge cameras or cctvs but but, but you can't have cameras everywhere are not uh, everywhere uh, exactly uh -huh. not in the classrooms because you know it inhibits uh, the learning of a kid and as well as the you know teacher also become conscious because all the time his conscious that camera is there so he will not be able to perform naturally naturally yeah. and suppose uh, if a child is you know seeking help from his uh, friend and uh, that will become a issue because that is being monitored on the camera and they will uh, they are not able to listen to that or in the principal's room the camera is installed and they are seeing yes he is talking to somebody so they will uh, that uh, peer chip will also go sure uh, so sure. that is also required indeed to be, hmm. indeed you know talking about the issue of cyber bullying itself karnika you know how does it take place who are the targets really and you know what are the effects generally uh, in in recent studies we've seen that uh, cyber bullying is uh, either happening through peers you know somebody has a grudge against another kid uh, so uh, a child is bullying another uh, you know child in the same class or in the same school and a uh, lot of them happen to be girls the victims mm. are girls and uh, but today 
I wouldn't say that only girls are the targets. There are also children you know, who are. That said, I just want to boys. understand how serious or how bad is it really? Because it is, 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 it, is, is, is it limited to just you know frivolous comments here and there, no, or is no, it? No, no, it is, is certainly it really not. It could lead to any kind of uh, you know heinous crimes. Uh, we've seen cases where there would be uh, uh, you know interaction on social media. Uh, and then, uh, or on, on through private chats or uh, email messaging, and another child is uh, bullied uh, by showing certain obscene pictures, uh, either of the same, you know, kid, uh, maybe transferred through uh, hacking or through uh, maybe uh, consent sharing, consensual sharing of pictures. Now later on, the blackmail happens, uh, or uh, the the child who is uh, you know there who, he's trying to ask the another kid to come and meet him at a particular place and they could be uh, known to each other they could be strangers so then when the child goes and meets he's either kidnapped or murdered even those kind of in, you know situations have a reason in the past and there were certain reports also are there instances of adults uh, posing as children uh, and, and, and indulging in some yes many many sex scandals or pornographic scandals are happening there are huge rackets of operators who are operating uh, and they're mainly targeting children and uh, children who they don't know or it could even be bullying could even be through persons who are known uh, within maybe the larger family circle but not the immediate family circle or even immediate at times so there are studies and there are instances and incidents like these and uh, when i started looking into this area in 2015 i wrote a book on protection of children on the internet and compiled a lot of statistics a lot of case studies and i see that when i update those things they have risen by 20% more crime at least every year. Hmm, hmm. So the instances have risen like that, anything. That's a staggering statistic Absolutely. and it, it has to be dealt with Absolutely. at the earliest. Absolutely and I'm very glad that NCRT has taken this initiative but I would only, I've looked at the guidelines and I feel uh, we could do much more detailing in it because if you if you involve experts, if you involve uh, other stakeholders who could comment and like then um, improvise on that guideline. Let it complete and then I'll yeah. give you a chance I to I think respond, that, yeah. that would be very, very helpful because pointers like these, you know, in bullet points, uh, don't open, pa uh, you know, share passwords or pop-ups should not be open are good definitely but how to implement these things maybe suggestion of certain tools uh, maybe uh, giving parents certain software a list of softwares which they feel are credible and internationally accepted would also help them because if you're giving pointer to a parent use firewall or use a wi-fi based filter system then they would be curious to know which is a reliable you know uh, site for more education or which is a reliable software for that so if we explain them those things that firewalls can be put in five levels. For example, people are using devices. You have a handphone, you have a tablet, you have a laptop at home. He cannot, a parent cannot put filters or it will be a cumbersome task to put filters on every gadget. So instead of doing that, if you place it on the router itself, on the Wi-Fi which you're using at home, it will cover all the gadgets. Sure. So sure. these are the useful tips which we can incorporate indeed, in the suggestions. Indeed, indeed. A uh, more hands-on approach as far as the authorities are concerned is what uh, Karnika is suggesting. Yes, Major, you want to respond to that? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, see, we NCRT has always uh, you know, welcomed any suggestions. And recently, the uh, there was an initiative from the Honorable Minister that you know the uh, this thing has been, a portal has been launched on which suggestions are invited for uh, reducing the load of the bag and any suggestions for if you want to give okay, what do you want to include or what is you want to decrease in the curriculum and all those things so this can also be given and our sites are open for that and you can directly send the suggestions and that will be incorporated sure so that so th that having been said uh, major what do you think is the role of the teachers and society on the whole to deal with this particular problem uh, how do we tackle the problem that we have at hand going forward so the, the role of the teacher is immensely important and see this is, this is way uh, uh, I hope everybody is clear about the role of NCRT and what NCRT is doing. Hmm. See NCRT was opened in 1961 and amalgamating various commissions and we have got five uh, regional institute of education. It was on the same lines of you know IITs and IIMs but today you see what uh, where are IITs where are IIMs and what is the uh, where is NCRT standing because we have not given that importance to our teachers which are the most vital in shaping the personality of a kid 
or for a society you know if if you have to build a society you have to build the institutes so right now lot has been done on that and uh, you know lot of improvement on teacher education is being done it is all in news and you must be uh, knowing all that what is being improved and incorporated in beard and all those things that are that is a different topic yeah, but that then, is a different matter uh, that is a different yes. matter but then yes we are paying a lot of attention to the teachers training and uh, we are very hopeful that very soon we'll be getting teachers and uh, let me tell you one more fact that are uh, the uh, teachers who are being trained from ncrt various regional institutes are maximum are being employed in uh, kendriya vidyalayas and navodaya vidyalayas so uh, the role of teacher is very important on uh, and all these things are incorporated in uh, you know our course and uh, i would say uh, this is uh, not as an official i am saying but if uh, private schools also public schools also approach for training and all the regular training can be done at uh, their place also so you, you so know? you have the bandwidth to 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 even take public schools on board and train them See, is what you suggest that is a matter to be discussed and when they they come then we can find a module for so you're training open them. to that yeah. you're open, you're open to that we can train them obviously teachers train since I, the guidelines yeah, have already been time, launched yeah. and they are ready to train uh, we should have sensitization workshops for you know teachers. that's what i was just getting to i can you know suggest that can be done and that will help uh, the entire country sure. so why not sure. do that yeah, yeah. Sure. We, we are doing workshops you yeah. know in the entire country we are doing workshops in various other fields but this can be incorporated this can see this is be. can be negotiated and spoken to this Certainly. is not a policy matter as such you know but the issue itself is at a nascent stage that is not being given too much importance at the moment right. but it is something that can blow out of proportion in the years to yeah, come if it is not dealt with Absolutely. immediately so sensitization as far as the teachers and parents Parents are Parents concerned, are concerned is of utmost important. Oh. Now let me talk to the parent here on the panel. Yeah. What is the role of the parent, and what is it that parents should do going forward to deal with this problem? What are some of the telltale signs that you need to look out for? See, uh, if you ask me, yes, it is hundred uh, percent parents' responsibility to talk to the teacher, to talk to the school management, and plus uh, they need to watch their kids themselves as well. because nowadays what we are doing we are just giving new gadgets to our kids without seeing without checking what they are doing are they uh, means browsing the right data or not the most of the parents they are busy in their life most of the parents are working they go early in the morning they came late in the night and they have no time to interact with their kids like ma'am said yes sensitization is the Uh, main requirement in our society today's requirement so where i am talking about the sensitization we need to sensitize parents kids and the school do parents also need to be better involved digitally yes definitely if they are educated then only they they'll educate their kids otherwise they will not educate like ma'am said if uh, if i am talking about the uh, fireworks right ma'am so Uh, parents if if i am not educated uh, regarding the software so how how can i go and uh, educate my kids you need you don't uh, uh, you should not open these sites or you go for this site and this is the right way to open this site so we need to educate our parents okay sure and uh, one more thing ncrt release some guidelines for schools for teachers and for kids if they give some guidelines to parents also mm -hmm. that would help us some more see uh, teachers are parents also no and, uh, <laughs> no i'm sorry and that, and second thing you know abhi uh, uh, apart from this guidelines there was a case of blue whale games and yes, all yes exactly so you tell me That's what true. to do in that do you require some guidelines on that you have to we look for your kids yes. and right like, yes. like you said we, i am also a parent you know uh, the thing is that you have to check your kids what they are doing exactly. and uh, definitely you have to find time even a 2 uh, 4 years uh, kid also knows how to operate mobile yes. and computer yeah. yes. and they also go on various sites so it is basically the duty of a parent you cannot put the responsibility totally on you know some authority or some government agency this has to become a public moment yes movement is from public then only something can be done like on blue whale you know people come and control and that thing has gone to the government and it was checked and all yeah. but then the prime responsibility lies with the parents mm. and then obviously 
child passes six to eight hours in school. Yes. So teachers are also required to be sensitized and yeah. trained on that aspect. There are softwares you, you, you like should, Zone Alarm, yeah. you know, they mm. will even uh, alert a parent that uh, something objectionable has been written by a kid or he has received some objectionable me message from somebody who is uh, trying to harass the child on social media These through, kind of through apps I'm talking and about. Through, uh, you know, through softwares like Zone Alarm. I mean, there are some softwares which will uh, really secure uh, the safety of the child on social media. Sure. So even those specialized softwares are available today. So sure, there are softwares available yeah. out there. You just have to go ahead yeah. and, you know, get use that them. information and yeah. use them. Use them. Yeah, but, uh, but who's going to give out that information also That's is another thing. aspect that needs to be spoken about. Yeah. But uh, taking the discussion <clears throat> forward, how can victims of cyberbullying be helped? Where does the process start? Okay, the first of all, if it's a kid, I think we should tell our children to confide in an elder, mm. whether it's a parent or it, uh, it is a teacher or the counselor of the school. And once the information is with them, they should contact, uh, you know, the law enforcement also. Um, because if it's uh, something which is obscene in nature, for instance, then they have to report it is a crime. And it is a duty of, uh, you know, uh, the person who knows about such crime being committed in India, I mean, such citizen has to report this matter to the police for investigation. Many times, due to the fear of defamation, parents or, you know, teachers or even schools do not want to report such incidents. Now, the problem is that if they don't do that, um, they, there will be never a redressal. And uh, since the, there is infrastructure, there is judicial system in the country, one must report such problems. One can keep the name confidential, the school's name confidential, that is possible if that request is given. So that right. can be taken care of. So I think we should have reporting. And uh, POXO does have mandatory reporting provisions also now, Section 1920, if you see the POXO Act. So we must report. And also we can contact the service provider. For example, if it happens on any social media, there is a public redressal officer uh, which is mandatory, you know, for every social media or any website. Uh, and if any particular person, for example, a victim, has a problem with somebody's message and he doesn't know who the identity of the person is, who is actually the person. They can contact the service provider, inform, report abuse. Apart from that, get the details of who this person is so that a you know, report can be made or a police report can be made. And uh, if they don't give that information to the person aggrieved, at least they will give it to the law enforcement. So that can happen. So that's a criminal process. Sure. Where there's a defamation which has happened, somebody is defamed online, he can also apply for compensation. So that also is a remedy available in the civil uh, remedy under law. You know? right. So that's possible as right. well. Right. You know, uh, Aprajita, how open are schools to deal with problems like this? If you approach a school saying that such kind of a problem has arisen, maybe this is arising out of the school, are schools willing to deal with the problem or are these issues just brushed aside? Uh, see, if, if I'm talking about the private schools, uh, they they do not like to interact with stakeholders. Here we are talking about the schools. Uh, the guidelines mention they, they need to talk uh, to their stakeholders. Who are the stakeholders? Parents are the stakeholders. And most of the private school, they do not want to interact with their parents. And we, have, we do have cases where parents trying to interact with the management or let's say leave it about the management, uh, interact with the principal. Principal is not ready to talk to them. So you tell me if I'm talking about this cyber crime, that was the reason I was asking who will take care of implementation. I really appreciate this step taken by NCRT that is really good, which is the need of R. But who will take the responsibility that every school is following such norms, right? If I'm talking about the NCRT books, so you know, uh, most of the private schools, they are not um, allowing uh, students to go for NCRT books. They are all already into commercial commercialization, right? Here I'm talking about the cyber the guidelines. If you ask me practically, because we are dealing those kind of cases, these kind of cases on daily basis, nobody bother to follow these kind of things. I'm just uh, giving an example. A guideline. I think it's not mandatory. Yeah. Nee, nee, ma'am, so that is fine. It's, 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 it's beyond the NCRT yes. scope I also that. to... I know that. I'm yeah. just talking about the guidelines only. Yes, okay. I'm just taking an example. After the Pradyuman case, we were talking about the safety and security. Where is the safety and security? We just heard about one, uh, 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 one uh, school van case. Hmm. 
So nobody is taking care of, actually nobody is taking care of these things. Sure. I, again, I am saying I am really appreciate, I really appreciate the CBSE issued such guidelines. Mm -hmm. But yes, school needs to take care of these things. Okay. They should follow the guidelines. Okay, the school has to follow the guidelines. The guidelines have been guidelines. issued. That's the rule of, that's, that's the role of the NCRT. They yeah, have done their, their part. But yeah. Yes, I Major. just wanted to add one thing, like you said, uh, Ben said that uh, NCRT books were not, uh, you know, by the schools and all. But see, uh, slowly it is increasing. Yeah. Uh, earlier we used to uh, publish around two crores books. This year we have uh, published around f uh, six crores. So number of schools have increased. So you know uh, the reason, because in all over India, parents are agitating. And why? It's why because the step of the you know government okay. has taken such yeah. step. Let, let me complete this point. Uh, yeah. That is that is why you know this thing has increased and it cannot increase in one go. You yes, know, agreed. parents will have to come forward. Then only it will increase. Okay. Know? So basically, yeah. what's coming out of this debate is that you need a holistic approach. All stakeholders need to be involved if you have to deal with this particular problem. And we are seeing that everyone seems to be on the same page and on the right page. And probably this issue can be tackled at the earliest. A quick closing comment from you, Karnika. Before I wrap up the program, what are some of the telltale, telltale signs that we need to look out for if someone is being cyber bullied? Uh, if or if someone is cyber bullying? Yeah, if somebody is being cyber bullied, it's very Im important to see how the uh, usual routine of the kid is. In case he's getting nervous or he's fearful or he's not talking to somebody, uh, he's spending uh, more or substantially less time on the internet and you know that he's hiding the phone or not showing his phone to the parents. So these are certain signs. And even if there's poor uh, you know, performance in school, uh, he's not interacting as much as he used to or playing as much as he used to. So these are certain signs and they have health uh, repercussions, you know, mm. these kind of activities uh, if, if a child is becoming a victim. And if somebody is uh, maybe cyber bullying another kid, he could get very aggressive. He could uh, you know, start showing anger signs or he could sh start being very, very, uh, I would say, assertive in a, in a, to a wrong extent. You know, so you can actually make out that this child is getting very, very ex aggressive even at home or in school. Sure. Uh, or even le leading to signs which are like hitting out on somebody, uh, hitting somebody physically. General aggressive harm. behavior that's, on the whole. That's what the psychological studies or, you know, health reports which I've read on this cyberbullying have stated. Okay. All right. On that note, then we'll call it a wrap on this edition of The Big Picture. I'd like to thank all my guests for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us. That's it from me. See you again next time.